Hello friend, welcome back to the grow room. It feels like it's been forever since we've been out here. Really the only thing that's been happening out here is I've been watering and taking care of the seedlings. There is so much growth and green that is happening out here. And it is time for some of these babies that are not so baby anymore to actually graduate and we need to go ahead and get them up potted. We also need to start a bunch of seeds today. We are going to be able to direct sow some things today. I did not realize how much we can actually do. And then I was looking at my calendar that I had put together at the beginning of the year. And because these last three weeks in my life have been crazy, we had Josh's party, we had the guests from out of town staying with us, and then we had Easter and it was pouring down rain. And then we had a bunch of freezer meal prep that I did. This has not really been on my radar. And so I was this morning looking at this and I was like, oh my goodness, okay, we can direct so a ton of things already. Today is, I'm actually not even sure what the date is. It is March 29th and we need to graduate a bunch of things and we need to start direct sewing things. I was this morning starting to feel a little overwhelmed with all of the possibilities of things that I could do today. And then I realized, whew, rain it in. Let's not get overwhelmed because we have all these seeds we can start Let's go ahead and do something that's gonna be pretty easy to check off the list. Get something under our belt that is easy, and that's gonna to be to up pot these dahlias. I did not realize, because this is the first time I'm growing dahlias, and it's the first time I'm growing dahlia from seed of any kind, how quickly these grow. I planted these on March 31st, and they're huge, and they need to graduate into a bigger container because I can't put those out for another three to four weeks yet. And I just wanna show you some crazy, amazing things that are happening. I think it's been two weeks or so since I up-potted my Snapdragons and they are looking so incredible. I can actually plant these out in the next two weeks along with the celery and celeriac. But down here is where we have a bunch of the perennial flowers we started. And we've got some good germination. I'm still waiting on some of this. This is Echinacea. Back there is the perennial sunflower. This is echinacea. The echinacea definitely sprouted before the rebecca has. Down here, this is lavender. And let's see, I have to pull this around this way. We have fever few. You can see how tiny those little seedlings are. Let's see if we have anything here yet. I don't see anything here. These are the poppy seeds that I planted. And this is more lavender. And so we're starting to get some germination on that. This is some Rebecca, and I see some green. Oh my goodness, look at all that. Okay, so we have the Sahara Rebecca that has started to germinate. And one of the Goldstrom that has germinated. I'm actually gonna go ahead and probably just cover half of that. We've got a ton of tomatoes that have germinated. I had very, very poor germination on these tomatoes. So one day I came out here and I just stuck a bunch of more seeds where they go. And you can tell the difference. These are tall ones are ones that germinated the first planting. And then these smaller ones are ones that have just germinated from the second planting. And that's great. This is way more snapdragons that are looking fantastic. This is tomatoes. I'm waiting for more germination on these because my germination rate was terrible. Also, that one little plant back there, that's a tomatillo, and that was the only tomatillo that germinated. So the day that I planted more tomato seeds, I stuck a bunch more tomatillo plants in the ground, and we'll see what happens there. So some things are looking so great, like this is basil. It looks great. I've harvested off of that, and we've been cooking with it. The onions look fantastic. The snapdragons look fantastic. But some things are so-so and the germination rate is not super great. I didn't buy any new tomatillo seeds this year. I didn't buy most of the tomato seeds that I planted this year are from tomato seeds that I've had in the past. And so if they don't end up doing that well, I keep telling myself I can go run to my local greenhouse and pick up some starts. But overall, everything is looking very green and lush and these look absolutely crazy and they are ready to go into a bigger home. So these are the Bee's Choice and the Petite Florets. 
And these have grown this much in 28 days. Also, these are my cauliflowers and cabbages. These can go out into the ground any day now. I've actually let them spend the night outside for the last couple nights and they look so beautiful. What I'm going to up pot these dahlias in are just some recycled pots that I've had from buying peppers and tomatoes and things from the store and I've just kept them over the years. And I'm going to just use a potting mix that I had. I am almost out of my Vermont compost and I need to start my dahlia seeds. And I wanna save that Vermont compost for starting the dahlia seeds with. So what I'm gonna do here, nothing super fancy. I should probably get some moisture in this potting mix. It's a little hydrophobic because it's been dry for so long. So it's gonna take a little bit of work to get the moisture mixed into this. So I just had this really big thought, and as I'm looking at this, I'm not gonna use this potting mix for this because this has slow release fertilizer in it, and I can tell that these fertilizer beads are starting to degrade a little bit. And you all know that I really enjoy watching Flower Hill Farm, and she just had an incident in her greenhouse where she had used some old fertilizer, a slow release bead fertilizer like this that was not stored properly, just like this potting mix has not been stored properly. It's been sitting on my back patio all year and it was burning her plants because it was breaking down too quickly. And so it was burning her plants. So I just had the thought that I can tell those little beads are not looking like they're intact, like they were last year. So I'm gonna dump this potting mix back into here. I'll find something to do with this, but this is not what its final destination is going to be. So I'm gonna use some other potty mix that I just got this year. This is actually what I used to up pot my Snapdragons because I am waiting on my Vermont compost to come. Nicole from Flower Hill Farm recommended that and it's always done me so well, but it's taking two weeks to get to me. And so I need to up pot these before that pot, before the Vermont compost is gonna be here. So I'm just gonna use this potty mix and I think it's gonna work just fine. I almost didn't do that, but I just wanna go with my gut here and use this instead of that other stuff. Sometimes it's worth just going with your gut feeling and that's what my gut's telling me to do. So how many can I fit on this one tray? So I have two full trays of dahlias with three different varieties. I've got three, six, I think I can get at least three more. This is a really good potty mix. This is Happy Frog. This is what I use to fill the green stalks. This is what they recommend. So I can get 12 transplants with these four inch pots. This variety right here is called Petite Florette. Here's a little peek at what Petite Florette flowers can look like. Because we are planting dahlia seeds, there's really an array of what they could end up looking like. If you plant a dahlia tuber, you are gonna get a clone of the mother plant, so you know exactly what you're gonna get. And when it comes to seed, it's a little bit of a mystery. And so this is gonna be kind of fun. I got three varieties of dahlia seeds from Florette and this is the first one, and I'll show you the other ones as we go. Now, there was a lot of things in my brain that I was thinking. Because the past three weeks, I had been focusing on Josh's birthday, and then Easter, and then freezer meals. I hadn't really spent a lot of time thinking about the garden, and there were kind of a lot of chores and things that needed to happen. 
and I was getting a little overwhelmed. So that's why I was trying to just check one thing off at a time. And you're gonna see, we end up getting so much stuff done today. And so it just worked by kind of checking one thing, one thing, one thing off. And in the end, we were able to accomplish a lot of things. I got this one tray up potted and I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually cut the tops off and try to encourage a shorter, stockier, bushier plant. But I think what I'm gonna do is wait just a minute and get them all up potted. Because one thing I can do with dahlias is you can propagate them. So I could take this cutting that I'm gonna cut, put it in a little root hormone, pot it up, and then potentially have twice as many plants for the same amount of seed that I purchased. But I'm gonna have to wait and see if that's what I'm gonna do. I do need to label this. I can just cut this piece of tape off here and just stick it right here on this tray. And it is a beautiful day out here, so I'm just gonna consider this, they're hardening off just a little bit. And I'm gonna start a pile of trays out here and just let them hang out here while I decide what to do with them. So up potting, it doesn't take a lot of my brain power to make the decision, it's just a matter of putting some soil in a container and then transplanting. But deciding if I'm gonna propagate takes decision. Now the reason I might not do it is because I might not have enough space under my grow lights to do it. And learning to grow something new is a skill in of itself and propagating something is a skill in of itself. So we'll just see. It feels so good out here though. It's been so rainy and icky that the sun is giving me so much encouragement and it's just wonderful. It's a huge reason why I garden is to get me outside and help improve my mental health. The reason I was going back and forth whether I was gonna propagate is because it felt a little overwhelming to me because it's so brand new of a concept. But spoiler alert from the future, we do end up doing it and we end up doing it two different ways. One is a major space saver and it is so easy to propagate dahlias. They are rooting and look beautiful. And so if you have wanted to try this, there's a couple different ways I'm gonna show you how to do it and it is pretty darn easy. I've got a plan. I've been going back and forth whether or not I'm gonna to try to propagate all of these dahlias. And it was feeling a little overwhelming to me. That's just a little dirt. I thought there was a bug on that leaf for a second. To propagate all these, because I just don't have space in this grow room, even though I'm getting one more shelf today. I don't have space for it. But what I do have space for is a few, and we are going to experiment this year and just see how well it does. So what I've bought here is some rooting hormone that you can use on a lot of different plants. I just got this on Amazon, and it had a whole list of tons of plants. So I filled up these four containers here and we're gonna try to propagate just a few of these dahlias and I'm only gonna try to propagate one variety, the Shooting Star, and I am going to trim all of the dahlias. I got the Beach Choice already all potted up and the Petite Florette potted up. I'm looking for a little bowl. And what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of this rooting hormone in this bowl. And I have clean scissors. I just took these out of the dishwasher and I'm going to snip that dahlia. I'm gonna dip it in the rooting hormone and I'm gonna stick that just like that. And I could do this with all of these that I'm going to be trimming today, but I'm only gonna do a few. I'm gonna take some of these leaves off. Basically now I have four more plants that I didn't have to buy seed for, which you can do this if you do this with tubers or with seed. 
So we just created four new identical plants as long as these will root out and we'll be able to plant them. Now I am gonna go through and top the rest of these so that I can get more blossoms on a shorter, stockier, bushier plant. So I did this with all of my snapdragons so far. Here's a good example. I cut the top of that off, that's where I cut the top. And what that's doing is it's encouraging these side shoots to come and it's going to produce a shorter, stockier plant because we cut the top off. So every area there's a leaf right in that intersection, there is two new branches forming. You can see right here's a fantastic example. I cut the top off and now we've got two side shoots here and we've got side shoots here and side shoots down here. So I wanna go through and just top the tops. You're supposed to count two up from the bottom and now it feels, now that I've rooted those, this feels crazy just to compost these tops because I could root them. I think what I'm gonna do with these ones, instead of just composting them, I have read that you can root them in water and maybe you would want a bigger stem to do that. So I'll just do the ones with a little bit bigger stems. I mean, they're not very big stems. They're about an inch and a half at most maybe. And I'm just gonna stick these ones in some water and see if we can root these out. The Dahlias that I have outside that I've up-potted first are a lot leggier than these ones. The shooting star ones definitely are the healthiest looking or at least shortest, squattest looking plants that I have when it comes to these dahlias. I just put those in the little jar of water and I'll put them under the lights and we'll see what happens. If they die off, no worries because I was gonna compost them anyway. And I just got some more jars for when we top off the dahlias that are still outside that I haven't topped off yet. So let me get all of the shooting stars up potted into these pots. These plants are just beautiful. They're just got a nice healthy looking stem. The roots are nice and white. So this is the perfect time to up pot them. It's interesting, some of them have red stems and some have green stems. At this point now, all of the dahlias that I've rooted have rooted out. I haven't planted the ones I'm propagating in water, but they do have roots. And the ones that I planted in the soil, I can't see if they have roots, but when I kind of just gently pull on them, you can tell that they have rooted into the soil. So I have way more dahlias than I'm gonna know what to do with when it comes to actually planting them. And so I have been texting a few friends and family asking them if they would like dahlias because I will have more than I have space to plant them. So this is gonna be kind of fun to see how this experiment ends up working out. And I can tell you that these dahlias, after I have potted them, look incredible just a week later. Here is a perfect example of the branching. So I just snipped the top off this one, but you can already see this dahlia was starting to grow side shoots there, here, and just barely up here. So instead of it just continuing to get taller, it's gonna put more energy into these six little side shoots. So that's the goal there. So time will tell how well that works out for me. Okay, so here we go. One more tray, done. So here are all my shooting star dahlias. We've got four trays. In this tray here is where we have our cuttings that we're gonna to try to propagate. And that is a lot of dahlias, but that's not all of them. Here are my other dahlias, and you can really see how kind of leggy they are. They're droopy. We've got the Bee's Choice and the Petite Florette. So what I'm gonna do is try to encourage these plants to stocky up and kind of, I mean, look at that. I don't know. This is why it's kind of fun. Like this one looks pretty good. 
This is why it's kind of fun to grow different varieties because I don't know if it's a variety thing, if it's a gardener thing. These have been under the same grow lights. They have been fertilized, all the same. So I'm not exactly sure. You know, I think this one, it's so droopy. I think I'm going to nip it right all the way down here and just encourage hopefully a stockier plant. Let's see right there. Normally you would wanna do the two true leaves up like this one. There's one true leaf here at the bottom and then the second true leaf there. But some of them that are super, super droopy, I'm gonna do it at the first true leaf. That one's actually not bad. Okay, we'll see if that does any better. So this is Petite Florette. I'm gonna save some of these cuttings and try to propagate them just in water again. Oh, that didn't even. I'm gonna grab a smaller cup once we go inside, but for now that'll work. I feel so much better about having all of these transplanted and trimmed. And so only time's gonna tell how well these will do once we get them out in the garden. I was getting a little discouraged Quite honestly, when I was starting to up pot the ones that were super leggy, the ones that we just cut back. But now that they're trimmed and they're in bigger pots, they look a whole lot better. And I'm hoping that they are going to kind of just, the up potting is what they needed to help strengthen them. And you know, this is a brand new variety of flower. I've never grown this before. So I think they look pretty good under the circumstances. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is gonna be really easy. And we are going to do some maintenance on the onions. With these clean scissors, these right here are the Walla Wallas. And I've already done this once before, and that's just coming in and giving them a haircut. These are delicious. They're basically like chives. And so we can definitely enjoy these in our cooking. So I'll bring these in and put these in the fridge. But we're gonna give these onions, these right here are our leeks and our shallots, and these are our yellow onions here. All right, one more project done, which feels good. I just brought those onion tops inside, so I'm gonna give these a good water. While I was watering, that gave me a second to kind of figure out what my game plan is next. My next game plan is going to be to up pot all of my petunias. Now, this is fantastic germination. In the past, I, well, I only tried to grow these one other time. Last year, I got zero to germinate. So the fact that there's a bunch of flowers that are growing on here is a huge accomplishment in the right direction. But these plants, if you look really close, these ones might be the right color. This, they're the dark purple color, but these ones, I think the leaves should be green, not purple. The only reason I say that, say that these might be the correct color, purple, not green, is because they're called shockwave purple and they're a very deep purple color petunia. But these ones are giant, pink and triumphant purple mix. So maybe they, the leaves are supposed to be purple. I don't know. I normally think of foliage as supposed to be green. So I'm thinking that these are begging to be up potted. These are in the tiny soil blocks, itty bitty soil blocks. And so I think they're ready to be up potted. So what I'm gonna up pot them into is the large soil blocks, which I have not shown you how to do that yet. I've only done it once myself so far, and that was with the snapdragons. So we're gonna use this soil blocker. So we'll start with these three trays. Hopefully we'll be able to get them all up potted on these three trays. This is my Vermont compost, and this is all the Vermont compost I have left. And the reason I did not use this to up pot the dahlias is because this makes the best soil blocks. So I have my soil blocker with my little square inserts. And I've already moistened the soil. And I'm gonna make soil blocks with this soil. And look how perfect those little blocks are. 
This is what I up-potted my snapdragons using, the ones that were in soil blocks. And I can get one more row this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these three trays up with the soil blocks. And then we'll go inside and start up potting. I don't know exactly how many I need. I got all three trays of soil blocking done, which is fantastic. So now what we're going to do is transplant these little babies into these soil blocks. One thing that's crazy about when you up pot things, so here I'm up potting these petunias. I've already up potted all of my snapdragons and then the dahlias we just did, is that it's amazing how quickly the plants will grow when you give them more space. Now some of these petunias, like these first two that I'm putting in these two soil blocks, obviously those probably didn't need to be up potted for a couple weeks, but the ones that were this size, they were really ready to be up potted and they have just blown up since I was able to up pot them. And they're super, super happy. Same with the dahlias. The dahlias have just taken off and the side shoots are growing like crazy, which I'm very happy to see. Now, one thing that's super interesting with soil blocks and the whole concept of soil blocking is a thing called air pruning. So you can see how all these roots are growing on the outside, but they're not growing out of the soil block. And if you're gentle, you can easily break them apart and easily transplant them into a bigger soil block. Now the concept of air pruning is when roots are exposed to air in the absence of humidity. So when a root is growing and it touches the side of the soil block and they realize there's no humidity and there's air, they stop growing. They actually prune themselves versus if you plant a seed in a plastic container and there's no air on the outside like our traditional pot, like the ones I just up potted my dahlia plants into, you have to be careful of your seedlings getting root bound because the roots never stop growing. And so when the root touches the side of the container, then they turn to the right or left or whatever they do and they start swirling and those roots start swirling around the container and then they can get root bound. And so that is one of the benefits of the soil blocks versus you know just a traditional cell. Now one thing that's pretty cool about the trays that I had started my dahlias in, those are the Epic Garden trays, is that those had, I don't know if you noticed it, but they had slits in the corners of the trays and that kind of mimics a soil block in that it's allowing air into the side of the, the pot so that it kind of air prunes itself. So here I'm just breaking apart the different varieties of petunias and I'm getting them planted. And because there are some that have quite a bit of roots, the nice thing is they're not root bound, they're nice and flowy. I just kind of tuck the roots into the center of the hole in the soil block and then just kind of push it in and that's all you have to do. Now they do make soil blocks blockers where you can make soil blocks in like four inch block size sizes. So you can take the larger size soil block here that I have, you can actually put that into an even bigger soil block. Now I'm not gonna do that with these petunias. I'm gonna put these petunias straight from this size soil block into my garden. But if you were starting like tomatoes or peppers and you wanted to up pop them from this size soil block into a bigger soil block, they do have those. I don't have that soil blocker. I just have been reusing the last year that I've been using soil blocks. I just use a four inch pot when I go to up pot my tomatoes and peppers. I don't think there's a right or wrong when it comes to this. It's really just preference. And I do a combination of all the things. It really just depends on what kind of soil I have on hand, what trays I have on hand, and what I'm in the mood for that day. I just filled up all three of these trays that I soil blocked with my petunias. And I've got this petunia variety left, the Triumph, purple mix 
and these pansies. So what I think I'm gonna do is just recycle this tray and I'm gonna put soil blocks on this tray. And that way I think I'll be able to, I think what I'm gonna do actually is just move these. My heat mat is not on, onto here. I know what these are because these are all the same petunia varieties. These are all the same pansies. I could probably put these pansies outside right now because I have pansies growing out here and actually flowering. Look at this. I'm trying so hard to get them to grow inside. And there's one growing in this gravel walkway that just self-seeded itself. And then over here, these purple ones self-seeded themselves from last year. This has me thinking that what I think I might do for my pansies in the future is just go to the store and get some and plant them all over and then just let them self seed themselves everywhere instead of trying to grow them from seed. So this is all the compost, Vermont compost I have left to make soil blocks. So I'm gonna get all these soil blocks, as many as I can onto this tray. I used every last bit of compost to fill this tray worth of soil blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off here because I don't wanna get confused. I'm gonna be putting the Triumph Purple Mix in here and my pansies in here. These are gonna be so happy having more space in here. Another reason why I was a little bit stressed on this day and trying to figure out like what is the best next thing I do is I was running out of soil, my Vermont compost to make soil blocks. I was running out of trays and I was running out of grow light space. And so it just felt like I wasn't exactly sure what I needed to do next. And we end up because we just slowly pick things off the list of things that need to do. We are able to get a ton of things up potted, which was fantastic because that really, really needed to happen. These plants take off and they look so healthy after this. And then what we end up doing is we end up direct sowing a bunch of seeds in the ground. And then the following week, we're able to actually move a ton of stuff out of the grow room and into the garden so that I can reclaim some of my trays so we can actually start more seeds. We did it. We got that one tray up potted. So that's pretty exciting that we've got our garden party mix, our white veil lace petunia, garden party mix over here, easy wave berry velour petunia, shockwave purple petunia, which is my favorite. So I hope those do something. Giant Alba pink petunias and our Triumph pink mix. So they don't look particularly healthy, but I don't know if that's the way they're supposed to with the coloring. These ones look pretty good and these ones look pretty good, but I'm not sure if they're supposed to be purple like that because I have never grown them. So I'm gonna get these back up underneath the light. I do not have space in here currently for everything. Josh is currently building me a, another shelf to put some lights on so that I can get all of those dahlias in here. But it feels good to get this checked off the list. I was getting a little worried about them being a little bit cramped in those mini soil blocks. The one thing about those mini soil blocks is that they dry out really quickly. So that's been a big learning curve, trying to figure out how much to water them and when to water them. But again, a lot of these I have tried to grow in the past and had absolutely no luck. And so the fact that I have some germinated is huge and it means we're, we are moving in the right direction of learning. But sometimes it can feel a little discouraging when things don't look like they're, like I think that they should. But again, I am so new to this that maybe that's the way they're supposed to look. I don't know. So here are some of our cuttings. I have over here, next to my other cuttings. And my sweet potatoes are just starting to put on slips. These long sweet potato slips were gifts from my mother-in-law. She gifted me this sweet potato that she planted. These were sweet potatoes from her garden last year and I have pulled off two big slips. There's two more that I can pull off pretty soon and it's growing a ton more. So she's had way better luck growing hers in the soil because mine you can see just how small they're just starting to perform. And she has already taken a ton of cuttings off those sweet potatoes and that's why she gifted it to me because she has more that are planted. So between what she's already taken off that and her other potatoes at home, she had enough. So she said I could have this one and keep cutting cuttings off this. I'm not gonna be planting sweet potatoes until late May, early June. So I, I think I'm gonna be able to get enough sweet potatoes to actually experiment planting. My only thought is why mine took so long 
is one, maybe the soil method is a better way to get slips is to plant them in soil instead of just water. Or two, hers were homegrown, so she knows she didn't spray them with any anti-sprout. And commercial growers, because when they harvest potatoes, they don't want them to sprout, obviously, because they want them to stay fresh for us to enjoy to eat. Maybe those sweet potatoes were sprayed with that even though they were organic. I have no idea. And so that's why they're just taking longer because they have something inhibiting the sprouting. Oh my goodness, it's a beautiful day. I feel so encouraging to up pot these things. They look so much better. My little cuttings, these are definitely wilty. These are the ones that I'm gonna try to root out, but I'll just keep them pretty, the soil pretty moist and see how that goes. If they end up dying, I'm not worried about it. But these ones, they look so good. This is my soil blocker I was just using and it's covered in mud. And I wanna rinse this off and get this clean. This is not mud, soil. I have a clear plan moving forward. <laughs> I have honestly felt pretty lost today. So many little decisions that need to be made and I've had a hard time <laughs> figuring out what is the next best decision. That's why I've been trying to do kind of easy things like I knew I needed to up pot my dahlias, got that done. I knew that I needed to up pot my petunias and my daisies, I got that done. Just felt overwhelming with all the options. And I am so new at this that sometimes I'm not sure if I'm making the right decision or not. And the fact that I'm out of my Vermont compost and I am out of my trays <laughs> that I've just felt a little bit like, what is the next best step? Well, I finally have a plan moving forward for the rest of what I'm gonna be doing today because when my Vermont compost comes next week, I am just going to use these trays that have these snapdragons on them and I can water these outside and I will do my soil blocks on these trays where I have my snapdragons to start my zinnias. My zinnias and peanuts were on the list of things to do today, but I think I need to just wait and do that next week. They will be totally fine if I wait to do them next week. And what I'm gonna plant right now are my sweet peas. And I'm gonna plant these on two of my trellises. So I had to figure out where exactly I'm gonna plant them. Josh is actually gonna be building me two more trellises this afternoon, but those are not done yet. So I'm gonna put my sweet peas on these two trellises right here. And I bought four different varieties of sweet peas, but I did not realize how few seeds were in each seed pack. So when Josh went to the store today to get me another shelf that he's gonna be building me that I can put my dahlias on, he picked up two, four, six more packs of Thankfully, one of the varieties of sweet peas I have, and the, they only had one color left, and it's my absolute favorite color. It's this deep burgundy color, and I want two trellises just filled with flowers. So I'm gonna take these, and I think what I'm actually gonna do first is get these soaking in a little bit of water. Ideally, I would have started these yesterday, and not right now. I'm not gonna use that one. Soaking, I would have soaked them. There's a couple seeds in here I wanna get out. Overnight, that's what the experts say. Going back, some experts say you need to soak them overnight. Some experts say you don't need to soak them overnight. Some people say you need to start them indoors. Some people say you don't. I'm not gonna start these indoors. I'm gonna direct sow them. It's about two or three weeks now until my last frost date. And the less I need to start indoors and I can direct sow out in the garden, the easier for me. Because you can see how much work it is to start things indoors. That if you can direct sow something, you can save yourself a lot of time. And you can see, this is what sweet pea seeds look like. They have a harder outer shell. Now these are not peas that we are going to eat. These are peas that are gonna produce a beautiful flower that we're going to enjoy. And I'm starting these ones because they get really tall and I'm gonna grow these on the trellis. It says they grow between seven and eight feet. And I'm gonna just put some water in here. And while I'm getting ready for planting something else, I'm just gonna let these soak here. 
They look like little fish eggs. I think I'm gonna put these blue ones in here too. So the majority are gonna be these deep maroon and then some are gonna be this navy, just for fun. And there's not very many seeds in here. So this is just gonna be a fun little surprise. Something to note, sweet peas are toxic. The entire part of the plant is toxic if you eat it. So these are not to be consumed. These are to be enjoyed. Just the beauty that they have to offer in the garden. So now, what is the next thing? I was gonna do one more thing. Oh, sugar snaps. I'm gonna go ahead and plant out sugar snap peas and some sugar daddies, and I want to plant some snow peas. So these are gonna be the first veggies going out into the garden today. Let's see, I know I have snow peas in here. I should have snow peas. Maybe I don't, maybe I just bought sugar snaps this year. Oh, there, down here. I have this trellis here, and then way down here I have this arch trellis here. I only have two arch trellises in the garden right now. And then this one is gonna be the sweet pea, and that one down there is gonna be sweet peas. Last year I tried to grow on this arched trellis cucumbers and they did not do anything. And on the other arched trellis I tried to grow melons and they didn't do anything. So my goal this year to, is to try to grow different crops and see if we can have better success growing a different crop. So I'm not gonna take this weed fabric all the way off to plant these. All I'm gonna do is uncover it just a little bit. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. It smells amazing. I'm gonna uncover it just a little bit. Fold that over. I don't want a bunch of weeds growing. Okay, got this bed prepped. I'm gonna put two trenches. Maybe we'll do, well no, one trench here. These need to go an inch deep. Now because these aren't soaked, I'll just need to come out here every day and water them. And that'll be good. That'll be good for me to get out into the garden. First seeds in the ground for 2024. Now I'm gonna do that exact same thing right here. I do need to transplant this. This is a time, I don't want my perennial herbs down here. I want them up on my patio, but that's gonna be a different day's project. Do the same thing. I think I'm gonna go ahead and transplant it right now. This is a perennial plant, meaning it comes back year after year. I actually started this plant from seed with you last year, and I'm pretty proud that it came back. But I don't want it next to my trellis because my trellis is an area I'm going to be planting an annual plant, a different one every year and the thyme is just in the way. So I've got a couple other thyme plants over in a different bed here, and I just go ahead and I make a hole and I plop this thyme plant in there. I know that long-term I want my thyme and most of my herbs up on my patio for easy access for cooking, but for now I'm just gonna put it in there and we're gonna call that good. So at this point I have both of my arch trellises planted out with sweet peas. My dream and my goal is for the sweet peas to come up over the arch trellis and meet somewhere in the middle 
and it will be beautiful <laughs> and that's my dream, but only time will tell if that ends up happening. But what I have had good success with in the past is growing sugar snap peas. So that's what I'm planting in this bed here. I just moved the landscape fabric back, put a trench in it. I put a pea about every inch to an inch and a half, and then I'm gonna cover it with soil, water it in, and hopefully in the near future, we will be snacking on sweet peas in the garden. It is one of my absolute favorite things to grow, sweet peas and snow peas, and you just pan fry them in butter and salt and pepper and garlic, and so good. So I'm glad to get those in the ground. I was gonna put sweet or sugar snap peas in three areas. I was gonna put it on this trellis, which I did plant sugar snap peas here. Then I was gonna put it on that trellis and the one way down there. Well, I planted that many sugar snap peas last year and it was way too many. So why in the world would I do three trellises worth of sugar snap peas again? So what I decided I'm gonna use this trellis for is actually some cucumbers. So that will be good. And then that trellis down there has the sugar daddy sweet peas. Or sweet peas are flowers, they're poisonous. Sugar snap peas, so sugar snap peas there sweet peas on the arch trellis. So I hope that we get a big arch trellis with tons of those ruby red flowers and a few of the navy blue flowers popped in there. I did plant out all the seed. I heavily, heavily seeded it because I've heard that sometimes they don't germinate that well. So I'm gonna get everything watered in. And then, oh, I wanna show you Josh got, let me get this watered in and then I'm gonna go up and show you Josh got my shelf built. I'm gonna soak these very, very well. It's not supposed to rain for five days. So I will be out here every morning and maybe evening watering these until I see them sprout and that will be good. That will be good for me to get out here every day and water these. It'll give me a better grasp on what I need to be planting and when and where I want to plant them. I do enjoy being out here and now I have a good reason to be out here all the time. And I know that going into the garden season, I will be able to come up with a better plan if I spend more time out here. At the beginning of the day, I was not exactly sure what this day had in store for us. Felt a little bit unsure. And look at that. We officially have seeds in the ground for 2024. Not only yummy things we can eat, as long as everything goes according to plan, but beautiful things to look at. And we got a bunch of things up potted. And Josh built me a beautiful new shelf, which he's currently putting a few new lights on so that these babies, when they come in, can end up on the shelf. Thanks, Josh. Hey, no problem. I really appreciate that. We have outgrown the three shelves that we had. These shelves were gifts from Josh's dad, actually, when he moved. He was downsizing and gave us these shelves, which have been a huge blessing. And so we just needed one more because we're growing so many more things this year. So I'm really excited what this day had in store and what this year is going to have in store. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.